Hey everyone, this is Trace. Welcome to episode three of three in this series of Seeker Plus on vitamins. Make sure you subscribe for all the episodes in this and all of our other series. Check us out on SoundCloud and iTunes for a smooshed together audio version of this story and a whole bunch of other different audio stories. They're so good. Make sure you come find us and leave us a rating. Today, we're going to wrap up our series on vitamins with what vitamins cannot do, how you might want to reconsider taking vitamins, and why it is that you probably think vitamins are super because somebody taught you to do that. And it really comes down to just a few different zealots. So let's kick into this. So far, we've learned what a vitamin is and what our body uses them for. We've also learned that the best way to get vitamins is through a varied and healthy diet. I cannot stress that enough. That is what all of the different studies are saying. If you want vitamins, go through a varied and healthy diet. But you can't talk vitamins and minerals without the consumer-focused vitamin industry getting into that mix. So today, we're going to go all in on this. The first question we had on this section is, are vitamin supplements bad? And the answer is no, they are not inherently bad. It's a supplement. Supplements are supplemental. What is bad is how we think about them. Supplemental things are not meant to be the mainstay of our diet, right? Supplements don't make you healthier. They aren't drugs. They aren't preventative medicine. They are supplementing a poor diet. They're supplementing a lack of something or a deficiency in something somewhere else in our diet. Johns Hopkins did a roundup of all the different studies on vitamin supplements and found, quote, an analysis of research involving 450,000 people, which found that multivitamins did not reduce the risk for heart disease or cancer, even though some vitamins claim that it can do that. It also found, quote, a study that tracked the mental functioning and multivitamin use of almost 6,000 men for 12 years found that multivitamins did not reduce the risk for mental declines, such as memory loss or slowed down thinking. Another thing that vitamins claim they can do. It also found, quote, a study of 1,708 heart attack survivors who took a high-dose multivitamin or placebo for up to 55 months found that rates of later heart attacks, heart surgeries, and deaths were similar in the two groups. So it doesn't work better than a placebo or a sugar pill. Multivitamins won't help you reduce your risk for cancer. They won't help you reduce your risk for cognitive decline or heart disease. And they won't help do a lot of things that a lot of people feel like they do. St. Michael's Hospital and the University of Toronto did a systematic review of vitamin supplements from 2012 to 2017 of all different studies about multivitamins, vitamin C, calcium, and vitamin D, and they found, quote, they showed no advantage or added risk in prevention of cardiovascular disease, heart attack, or premature death. Just let that sink in. Vitamins don't really seem to help us in the way that drugs do. Not a surprise, really, unless you're thinking about vitamins wrong. They're a supplement to missing things in your diet. They're not a preventative medicine or a cure. And as we learned earlier, too much of a good thing can actually hurt us. The University of Minnesota in 2011 found that women who took supplemental multivitamins died at higher rates than those who did not. Another study in the Cleveland Clinic found that men who took vitamin E had higher risks of prostate cancer. So how did we come to believe the apparent myth that nutritional supplements, dietary supplements, could make us somehow healthier? It comes back to this one guy, which is amazing. So rarely comes back to one guy, but it kind of does come back to this one guy, Linus Pauling. In 1931, he published a paper in the Journal of the American Chemical Society called The Nature of the Chemical Bond. Chemists at the time knew that ionic and covalent bonds existed in chemistry. Pauling found that electron sharing meant that there was something in between the ionic and covalent bonds. Basically, he melded quantum theory plus chemistry. And because of that, he became a big deal. He became a professor at Caltech. He was elected to the National Academy of Sciences, the youngest person ever. He was only 30, and he won a Nobel Prize. This made him a huge deal in science. He continued publishing papers on sickle cell anemia and proteins. He speculated about mutations in blood cells that indicated that humans and gorillas had a shared ancestor that was only 11 million years ago. Then, disaster. Pauling was in his 60s, and he was starting to talk about living longer. And Erwin Stone, a biochemist, wrote him a letter, and he told Pauling, there's a way to do that. Take 3,000 milligrams of vitamin C every day, and he would live, quote, 25 years longer 
and probably more. And Pauling, this very influential, very important man who does science for a living, followed his advice. And he felt great. He didn't have colds. He felt lively or healthy. He increased the dosage to 18,000 milligrams per day because he thought this was some kind of miracle cure. In 1970, Pauling published a paper, Vitamin C and the Common Cold. And the paper was designed to urge the public to take 3,000 milligrams of vitamin C every day. By the way, that is 50 times the recommended dosage of vitamin C. And this was disastrous because scientists had already published lots of papers debunking vitamin C as a cure-all for the common cold. They'd published lots of different papers talking about what vitamin C could and could not do for us. But Pauling's paper convinced scientists that one, there was more to do, and two, convinced people that he was right. Pharmacists started stocking more vitamin C in higher milligram dosages. The sales went up tenfold. That's 10 times more vitamin C sales. People started to listen to Pauling and take these vitamin Cs as if they were curing themselves or you know, shielding themselves against these illnesses. And studies started again across the country and they were not finding what Pauling was hawking. They were finding side effects of high vitamin C dosages like kidney stones, stomach cramps, nausea, and diarrhea. You know what they weren't finding? People suddenly living 25 years or longer. But the damage was done, and companies that sold vitamins realized that they had something here. If you can get somebody to get out there and hawk your product, you're going to sell more of it. You know, duh. And this has not stopped today. Endocrinologist Dr. Michael Holick is hawking vitamin D as a way to cure what ails you now. Though a comprehensive 2011 report found that most people in the U.S. get enough vitamin D, Holick's personal view is we need more. And not unlike Pauling, he's a very powerful doctor. So he actually drafted the National Vitamin D Guidelines. So now we recommend that we take more vitamin D because he decided when he wrote the guidelines. But should we take more vitamin D? In 2017, sales were almost $1 billion. But does the vitamin D supplement actually help people? Well, quote, there's no evidence that people who take a lot of vitamin D are any healthier than those who take very little. And in fact, quote, your bones could suffer if you take supplements when you don't need them. Holick has written hundreds of papers on vitamin D, but he's also taken money from the tanning bed industry and the vitamin supplement industry. So when it comes to stuff like this, we commonly believe that these vitamins will help because someone has told us, but we don't always look into who told them. In May 2018, a new study was released looking at 179 different papers and combining the results. The supplements that they examined were vitamins A, C, D, E, B1, which is thiamine, B2, which is riboflavin, B3, which is niacin, B6, which is pyridoxine, and B9, which is folic acid, beta carotene. They looked at minerals, calcium, iron, zinc, magnesium, and selenium, and they found mostly, quote, there was no benefit from taking them, but also no harm. So if you like throwing money in the trash, cool. Folic acid might help prevent stroke or heart disease in those at risk for stroke and heart disease. But if you're not at risk, buying folic acid as a shield might up your prostate cancer risk, but won't help you with the other things. So I could go on and on with this. There are so many studies that talk all about vitamins and look into the efficacy of vitamins. You know why? Because we talk all about vitamins and we want them to work. The reason we think vitamins are good or tend to is because our moms told us they were and these other powerful scientists told us that they felt so good about them. But we also were told by commercials and drug companies and vitamin companies and people who stand to make a profit off of our ignorance in this area. The industry behind vitamins and supplements uses promotions to make people want to buy vitamins and supplements. The Kardashians hawk these gummies that supposedly make their hair healthier. Gwyneth Paltrow, who is often debunked, also sells vitamins and pills and liquids and they're basically potions. Infowars even sells vitamins and supplements. Brain Force Plus, which is supposed to supercharge your state of mind. You know why? 
this works because people want to believe, right? You want to believe that I can take this pill. And it goes without saying that these groups are co-opting science to try and claim efficacy. Like it will cure something. It will protect you from something. Drugs are out there that claim with ingredients from jellyfish that they can help your brain. And they use words like clinically proven. Those are science words, but there's not really any science there. They're just using those words. Let's go back to what we were saying earlier. This is a dietary supplement. It's a food supplement. If you don't have enough of this in your healthy, varied diet, you can take this pill to make up the difference. But that's about all they do. Drugs and medicine cure things. Supplements help make sure that your diet is balanced. To quote Bonnie Patton, the executive director of the nonprofit Truth in Advertising, quote, people want to believe that there's some all natural healthy supplement that they can take that's gonna make them feel and look better. And a lot of times, much of it is based on hype or misleading marketing. So where's our corner, right? Where's the guy in our corner on this? The FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, they don't actually regulate supplements, not in the way that you think anyway. They will step in if a company goes out of line, but they don't look them over before they hit market. And this is according to the Dietary Supplement Health and Education Act of 1994. Before that, we were working with a law from the 1930s. But in 94, they passed a pretty quickly criticized bill that was deemed an industry-friendly bill. So now, supplements are everywhere. And it's actually a pretty new problem because it's only from the 1990s. So what should we do? Eat a well-balanced, healthy diet and get all your vitamins that way. I know, it's the most boring answer to something that's so interesting. And yet, you probably won't do it, right? Because it's so much easier to go to a shiny aisle and buy a pill that promises to help. Dr. David Series, a director of medical nutrition at Columbia University Medical Center, told the New York Times, the way to make sure that you don't have to worry about dietary supplements is to eat lots of fruits and vegetables, eat things that look as much like as when they came out of the ground or off the hoof or hook as possible. He also said, eat less processed food, no extremes. It's that simple, but simple is boring and doesn't sell. Dr. Series is right. <laughs> Supplements are amazing. They can help people who don't get enough from their diet, people who need or are at risk for a deficiency, people who say want to eat vegan but don't want to eat meat so they can take a B12 supplement, people who are allergic or are unable to procure things that do exist in a healthy diet. Supplements are great for all of that, but we evolved to eat so many different things. So supplements don't actually fix a problem. They're just a stopgap. They don't make up for missing a meal or eating a pizza every day. They just make sure that you don't break down. And that's pretty darn boring. There are no magic pills out there. There's just a bunch of human-made ones and science to see if those pills are telling the truth. Thanks for watching Seeker Plus this week. For more episodes, come find us wherever you get your audio podcasts. You can find us out there. There are new stories in the audio podcast feed every single week. And in the meantime, watch more Seeker videos. Come find us on social media. All you got to do is look for Seeker or you can find me at Trace Dominguez.